Sometimes you wake up finding yourself lightheaded for hours like some sort of fairy tale fever dream where you step out of bed and both your legs fall asleep. So you fall flat on your face and just decide to sleep on the floor for the rest of the day. And that's basically what I decided to do yesterday. So that's why we're covering the new Maelstrom update today, even though it still feels like a fever dream with a lot of the stuff that I read in it. So Dark Tide's going to be getting this update mid-August, and I guess we're still ambiguous with the release dates for some reason, but now we get a little dev blog teaser post about the future of what's coming in the next update, and it isn't really a blog, just basically early patch notes, but I guess we're devoted rejects now. It's a fabulous upgrade. So one of the first things they say is they're still working on Xbox, which is going to be a great disaster video when it launches, so I'm looking forward to that cookout, but actual improvements to Dark Tide are coming in hotter than that barbecue for us to play around with. The Maelstrom missions are a fantastic idea that give us the ability to at least always play some sort of high shock or difficult game mode consistently, and also give a mega end game difficulty with random modifiers rotating through it, so that actually sounds really fun. I'm just not sure if they realize that the bug fixes they did to the doggos and the mutants were accidentally reverted, so they should probably look into fixing those again. But a secondary part to the Maelstrom missions is that the players get a positive from what it looks like, and I really love that. Moving past debuff only content is a massive step in the right direction for fun and cool game modes, which is what the game desperately needs, and it's really good for the long-term health of the game. Unfortunately, only a small portion of people actually play Tier 5. I know that from the forums and YouTube comments, you'd think everyone was a Tier 5 gamer with hundreds of VODs uploaded on their alt channel, so it'll be a great goal for people to work towards eventually when they relaunch the game at some point. I'm also assuming these will be challenging to some degree, even with god rolls and bits builds, and that's something I've really been looking for. If you've been keeping up with the streams and just in Discord and stuff. A lot of us have rotated into using meme builds because the game just gets too easy with anything meta after a certain point, so I'm genuinely happy with a lot of these mission changes. The only L that I think they'll take is calling this auric level operations and not letting me load into a map shooting the specialty ammunition I've been stockpiling for the last nine months, so... There's also bonus stuff for Q and quick play, but it is a little weird to get bonus EXP for doing the auric level stuff when we have to be max level for it anyways. I'll assume it's for quick play at the lower tiers to incentivize queuing into it, and it should help with the smaller player population in the future. But no matter what way I look at it, it's an overall win for the mission board, and I'm pretty happy just in general with the changes to it, which is something I haven't been able to say in a long time. So moving on to the matchmaking part, you can pick your server now. You could already do this with a VPN, which is what I've been doing forever, basically. And it doesn't fix lag. This is a complete disconnect from Fat Shark's part on what they think is the issue. If you play with people from different regions, you'd expect a delay if you ended up on a random server. For instance, when I play with my Australian friends and I end up on the C server, I'm obviously going to have like 200 to like 250 ping. So I just VPN there to play with them and I get like 130, 140. And it's really not that big of a deal. The game still functions pretty well as long as it's within a week of a server restart when they do their update. I've been able to see my ping for a very long time and this is not the problem. And you will be able to see your ping, but after this update comes out, everybody's gonna be able to see that this wasn't the main issue the entire time. The real problem is that the servers need to be restarted once a week, no questions asked. Hit registration is server side. And the servers memory leak like crazy because they don't get restarted very often. Every competent company that has a persistent online service restarts their servers once per week. I've played a game called Black Desert Online for years and years, basically since launch on NA. I've been through it all, and every time they've skipped a week, the game literally falls apart. They can't afford to skip a week, and that game has exponentially more players and playable space than Dark Tide ever will. Patchark really needs to stop being stubborn on this one, and like, if your playtime gets interrupted for the one hour that the servers are down, will they just turn them off and on again so the game could run buttery smooth for the week, it's worth it, right? If you're playing that much anyways, you should probably take a break. I'm going to double down on this one. I think that this is one of the main issues with the game because every single time they do an update and all the servers go down and they bring them back up, it runs buttery smooth for about a week and then it falls apart progressively worse and worse after that. The state the game's in right now because it's been so long since the last update should show you enough about what I'm talking about. But now for crafting. I did the original God Roll video because this system is based off an old Chinese MMO that I played. It shares a lot of similarities, so finally seeing perks be on the selection list is a massive W, and it's what they originally wanted from their OG crafting post 10 months ago. It's way overdue, but at least it's finally in, and it's exactly what the majority of people wanted too, and I'm genuinely happy with this part of it. And with such huge ups, you would think they would just take an all-out win and move on with it and make the entire player base happy in the whole community, but nope. 
We still have to sit here and talk about only picking two things with crafting locks. Either two perks, two blessings, one perk, one blessing. I guess it ends up being a W for Curios, but if you're just trying to craft a god roll, you still use the exact same process and nothing changes other than getting to pick the one perk. You were already going to have to change. It's the same exact system with a very small twist, and I just don't understand the locks at this stage. I can't believe that I'm sitting here talking about locks nine months after the game's been out and everybody's hated it like it's not like this is some sort of like this this is the fever dream part of it the fact that someone's so stubborn they're like we need these locks to retain players you're not retaining any players you're bleeding them off faster than ever remove the locks it's <laughs> this is insane at this point so they say it's because of some sort of big impact on item acquisition we all know that's just garbage it's really obvious at this point you still have to unlock blessings which is just an overall toxic system you can't nerf anything with locks in place because it is a gotcha game experience so it feels bad when something you've worked hard to build doesn't work anymore so it would just cause another well i guess minor exodus of players at this point because it can't be a mass exodus without mass I brought this up way back in December when I first saw the crafting system. Unlocking everything is a band-aid fix to make it feel good for everyone because it's fundamentally broken at its core. Crafting needs a complete overhaul. Obtaining blessings is not fun. It's not a good system. It feels very bad to roll hundreds of items to not get something that's as simple as bloodthirsty. This isn't even a rare blessing. I'm just extremely unlucky. I'm at 128 rolls on the eviscerator for it. So how's a new player supposed to come into the game to get a blessing they want to try? It's just stupid. It doesn't make sense. At this point, you might be thinking, but then it gets too easy to make god rolls. And that doesn't matter either because god rolls only compensate for you making mistakes. And anybody who wanted them already has a full set of one in basically every single slot. I just want fun meme weapons now. I want the crafting unlock to make those fun, cool, interesting weapons whenever I feel like. I want it unlocked so that when new people come into the game, they don't feel bad and immediately quit because they think it's a garbage experience, which is exactly what it is. And I know so many people agree with that just from the comments and feedback I've gotten from the last nine months. It's so stupid to not be able to try and play what you feel like. And this gotcha garbage just has no place in the game, man. They've never even talked about a way to purchase blessings in the future or have a failsafe stop on RNG. Even gotcha games like Star Rail have failsafes to guarantee you something after a certain point. So that does need to happen in the future. But I do want them to just double back by patch day and just unlock crafting completely. There just shouldn't be any locks in this game. It doesn't have any place in it. It doesn't make any sense. They need to just take the easy W and make people happy. They can't afford to have a half W on this one. This needs to be a full on win. If anything, you'll get more people playing to go craft random meme weapons, things they wanted to try just to go have fun and test the game out with. And for the people worried about it ruining some sort of gameplay loop, it's been broken for a very long time. The second you've been able to get like over 150% damage scaling, you just get to one shot the entire screen basically and the end game just becomes a joke. It's never really been about skill in the first place, even without the big damage scaling. It really just comes down to practice and fundamentals, but don't get me wrong. I don't think it's bad to have some bonus damage scaling for these weapons for more people to be able to participate. The more people that can play together and have fun is all that really matters at the end of the day. The main point of all of this is that we should be able to do whatever we want with the weapons. The game would just be more fun and more people would just be happy. If they remove all the locks, they can easily start balancing these things because we have the freedom to swap dead blessings or perks off of our weapons with no questions asked, and it would just be more enjoyable. And nobody has room to be mad about anything at that stage because they're slowly trying to recover the health of the game. And the game is in a dire need of a balance pass as it is right now. But they can't do it because it feels terrible to nuke people's hard work. Moving on, another key feature we get back from the closed beta test which i don't know how it ever made it out of the game in the first place was account shared currencies this is another big w that should have just been in the game the entire time i don't know anyways a win to win this is good for the game it's another step in the right direction but that's not what we needed at this point we need the gas pedal to the floor in the right direction with the consistency we were promised and never received a lot of the declining player base stabilization was from steam summer sales and you will see another drop next month unless they make this an only w patch and something more serious we need to talk about is how other games are being managed and then when you look at fat shark and how they're managing things it's pretty easy for them just to go look outside to be able to copy and emulate what other people are doing to succeed and they're just not doing that. On this channel, I used to play a bunch of everything, and we're definitely going back to that, but when we look at one of my most played games, Lost Ark, it was ran into the ground by three incompetent people that were appointed to take care of the game because the game director was sick and needed to retire, but he had to come back because the people he had appointed failed the game. 
He was literally crying on a live stream, apologizing to his beloved players, promising he would fix the game and give everyone his true vision because that's how much he cares about Lost Ark. He built this. This is his perfect game in his mind, and he wants everybody to love it. And he made a new promise that he was hiring a new competent person to take his place in the future because he understands that those three people that he appointed aren't good enough to run the game. I love Lost Ark. It's been a big part of my gaming life for a very long time. Seeing the guy who gave me so much enjoyment and promised that it would get better made me cope and think things could get better, even if it's slowly. Then when we look at Black Desert Online, they took the head off of every other MMO with one of the best updates I've ever seen in a long time. And as they've been popping off, the community managers are Rick rolling people in game, popping into streams, talking to people, having fun. And they're really open about their content updates for the next couple of months about what they're working on. And a lot of other companies aren't doing that. They also have previews and videos of what they're actually doing, what they're working on. That way you're reassured that things are coming to the game. Because when we look at Fat Shark, they aren't doing anything. This dev blog isn't even a blog, it's patch notes. Dark Tide used to do streams in the past too, talking about the game and had even more pre-launch. So I'm wondering where all this went. They had all of the prerequisites before anybody else did, and they threw it all out. And what I want to know, and what I think most people should want at this point, is just better service for sticking with Fat Shark through everything. I want to see the lead Dark Tide devs and the game director front and center on a live stream talking about the game and what they're working on with visual proof that they have some future plan for it. And I think in the future, doing patch notes early is a great idea. But refusing to budge on a key factor that everyone hates, well, the player base is just spiraling, is just idiotic. They need to backtrack and remove all the locks and take the easy W and move on. We're seeing one of our favorite games die due to stubbornness, bad communication, and undeserved ego. And our only CM is so limited in what they can say, it just gets weird not being able to see them talk about such simple things. I know a lot of people are happy with this Maelstrom update. Again, I think that a lot of this stuff is really good. I think the mission part's cool. The picking perks is great. The account-wide currency is massive. But I want to see a future. I want to hear from the game director and the lead devs answering real questions, not some curated garbage. And I want to know what you want to hear from Fat Shark too, because we've gone far too long without real answers. And just to let you know what I'm planning, I have some Remnant 2 videos coming out, as well as a Lost Ark video I've been planning for a while. It's going to be a lot like the Dark Tide review, so hopefully you can all enjoy that one. I'm making it along the lines if you never had to play the game to be able to understand it and enjoy the video then so make sure you join the discord i'm going to be pulling people from the community to go do like some crazy seven days to die event that i have planned and i'm going to be doing more and more community events as time goes on because i want to make fun community focused videos so all that stuff's linked in the description for you along with everything else you'll need but that's going to be all for now and i hope you all have a great night